<laughs> Professor Perez now is at uh, Lehman College, and uh, without any further introduction, he's going to uh, share some interesting stuff with all of us. Thank you. So, okay, so let me tell you a little bit about myself. I was a columnist for the Bergen Record for all these years. Before that, I was with the, Ber with the New York Daily News. And, uh, and uh, you know, thank you for inviting me, but also thank you for doing what you're doing, because unfortunately, uh, we have too many fiestas on Hispanic Heritage Month and not enough substance. Uh, you know, we like to party like there's no mañana in the Hispanic <laughs> community. And so if there's a parade, we're there. And if there's a, a cocktail party, we're there. But during Hispanic Heritage Month, we really should be talking about our heritage and about our history and about our Hispanic contributions. And that's what I'm all about, and that's why I'm here. Uh, and again, I thank you for the opportunity, but I also thank you for doing what you're doing. Um, uh, it's very, very important that we do this because, again, as a reporter for many years, first with the Daily News, and then before that with the Miami Herald, and then, uh, uh, then with the Bergen Record, if Amonsi knows this, if you're working on the weekend, if you're working on a Sunday in the summer, you're covering a parade, sometimes two or three parades. And what happens when you go to these parades? You try to write a, a feature article about the parade and what's going on in the parade. And so you talk to all these people, all these you know, people dressed in ethnic costumes. And, and you want to you know, interview them. And you want a variety. When you're a reporter, you don't want the same quote over and over again. You don't want people telling you, oh, I'm here because I'm very proud of being Hispanic. And OK, you talk to the next guy, oh, yeah, I'm here because I'm also very proud of being Hispanic. And 20 people will tell you that. And then when you get to the point where you say, excuse me, but I need you to say something else. Why are you proud of being Hispanic? What is it about your heritage that makes you so proud? Blank. Nada. Nothing to say about their own heritage. And so you know that's, that's the problem here. It's that our own youth, our own curriculums, our own book school, uh, textbooks, are not teaching the Hispanic side of American history. And so what I try to do is fill those gaps. And I've been trying to do that as a journalist for years. And it, let me go back to the beginning. It started because I was a reporter with the, with the New York Daily News, a guy whose name is Sam Roberts, who is uh, now a top editor with the New York Times, was my editor then at the Daily News. And he said, Miguel, it's Hispanic Heritage Bunch, and we found out that there's this guy whose name is Joe Montserrat. I knew Montserrat already because he had already been a member of the New York City School Board, big, big shot in New York City politics. But now he had gotten $50,000 from the Ford Foundation to study Hispanic history, to go around the country doing what I'm doing now, frankly, uh, researching, visiting all these historic places and all that. So they said, go and interview Joe Montserrat, do, an, do, a, do a, a feature article on Joe. And that was, it changed my life. That guy became my mentor. He's dead now. He died a few years ago. But he influenced me so much. I interviewed him so many times on, on the radio. I used to do a radio show. I used to do a television show on New Jersey Network. Some of you might remember Images Imágenes on the New Jersey Network. I was the host there. We, we invited him to Images Imágenes once. And he had so much to say that the producers, a half hour show, at the end of the half hour, the producers came out and said, Miguel, you got to keep this guy on. You, you can't let him go. Half an hour, let's do another show. So we did, we did a two-part thing with him about Hispanic history. And again, let me get to the history. Because again, when I met Joe, he said, Miguel, uh, what are you? How old are you? I was in my 20s. And he said, uh, so how much do you know about your own history? He put me on the spot. And he said, you know, let me, let's just go through it. So you know, I had my education comes from the state of Florida. I grew up in Miami. So in, in Florida, you do have a little more than the rest of the country, because there is that Florida, Spanish, Ponce de Leon heritage, and so forth. So I did have a little bit. I mean, I said, no, you know, 1513, Ponce de Leon, 1565, San Agustin. He said, that's all you know? Is that it? He said, picture, he said, picture the map of the United States, Miguel. You see it? I said, yeah. He said, you have this image because in school they taught you that it happened this way, from east to west. Lewis and Clark, they taught you about Lewis and Clark, the wonderful achievements, of, and they were wonderful. But you know, before Lewis and Clark, 200 years earlier, the Spanish did it from south to north. 
The books, the history books tell you that Lewis and Clark were the first white men to see the North American wilderness. Really? Ever heard of Hernando de Soto? You know, there are all these people who covered and discovered and explored major American landmarks. I asked people, why do you think half the country is named in Spanish? Half the, all the seven states have Spanish names. And so, again, that's what Joe Monserrat taught me and what I've been preaching ever since. And so I write a nationally syndicated column now. Newspapers all over the country publish my column. No longer the record, but other places. <laughs> and so what I do every once in a while is instead of writing uh, the local current events column about what's happening in the news, I write a history column. And it's up to 38 parts now. And a year ago, almost a year ago, last November, it's going to be a year, I created a website. And I started putting all these chapters on hiddenhispanicheritage.com. So all of you should have a little card on your desk. I'm hoping that you go there later and check it out. But what I've done is I've had the opportunity to go. And this year, as a professor from Lehman College, I'm on sabbatical. I'm going to spend the next year traveling going to all these historical places that I still haven't seen. I'm going in November throughout the whole Southwest car road trip. So I'm going to do all these historical places that I still haven't been to. But let me tell you some of the places that I've already been to. Of course, Jamestown, Virginia. I went to Jamestown. And they, the sub headline of the Jamestown, you know what they call Jamestown? America's birthplace. San Agustin was born 42 years earlier. So how come? It's a distortion. I went to San Agustin and I interviewed a historian there, the official historian for the city of San Agustin. I said, excuse me, I just came from Jamestown. What's going on? They say they're America's birthplace. And he said, listen, when they were building Jamestown, we were going through urban renewal. <laughs> so I love that line. But it's true. It was 42 years earlier. Look, do you know that the Spanish conquistadors were here long before the British? That Spanish was spoken in North America long before a word of English was uttered? That San Agustin came 42 years before Jamestown? That the first American Thanksgiving and Christmases were celebrated in Spanish? Do you know about the names of all the cities and states? It's not San, it's not, it's not St. Francis. It's San Francisco for a reason. We were there first. People don't realize that we went up the, before the, before the Mayflower, the Spanish had gone up the East, the East Coast and the West Coast, all the way up. They had chartered the coast, both coasts of what is now the United States. Do you know about Esteban Gomez? Esteban Gomez, I love the Esteban Gomez story. Esteban Gomez, if you actually look it up on Google, just look up Esteban Gomez and then look up um, images. You'll get this map that says that you guys live in La Tierra de Esteban Gomez. Spanish conquistador who came up here, actually he was Portuguese. He sailed for Spain, but it was a, a, a Spanish ship. They found the Hudson River right after um, uh, Verrazano. Verrazano came first, Esteban Gomez came second, and he actually named the Hudson River. So you guys drive over the Hudson River every day, and you don't know you really are driving over the San Antonio River, which is what he called it. <laughs> so yeah, but again, there's all this stuff. Do you know why we should be celebrating our birthday? This is our 500th birthday. Ponce de Leon in 1513, 1513, 500 years ago, April 2nd, 1513, discovered Florida. What was Florida? Let's see, can we go to maps? I'll show you the Florida that in the 16th century Europe, what they considered Florida. Florida was what you see there. That was Florida. They're all, that keeps sliding. There are many, many more. Uh, they just leave it there. No, no, just leave it there and you'll see the slideshow. There are all these 16th, 17th century maps that consider Florida what is now most of the United States. So when Ponce de Leon discovered Florida in 1513, he discovered our country. In the state of Florida, we were, they are having major celebrations now called Viva Florida 500. 
They are celebrating, and I went there on April 2nd, and I went to all kinds of reenactments of the landing of Ponce de Leon on April 2nd, and you can read about it on, in my website. But in, all over the state of Florida, they're having these festivities that we should be having all over the country. Why aren't we celebrating our birthday? If you remember, some of you are old enough to remember the bicentennial, the 200th anniversary of, of the Declaration of Independence. That was wonderful. We had and, you know, fireworks all over the country to commemorate that. Why can't we do the same thing for our discovery day, April 2nd? That's when, you know, he, he saw this land and he saw it was very flowery and it was Easter season. And in Ponce de Leon, he said, hey, La Florida. And it stuck. So, but again, there are all these incredible, I could go on and on and on about all these different things that are, you know, that we are just not aware of. That first European American century, a whole century before the, the Mayflower, where the Spanish were coming up and down all over the place, exploring all over North America. We have this image. We have this image that the conquistadors only went south. Actually, they, a lot of them came north. Look, before, let me give you a, a little list here. Before the Mayflower, territory that is now Florida, Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Tennessee, Mississippi, Arkansas, Louisiana, Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, Colorado, Oklahoma, and Kansas was all explored by Spanish before the Mayflower. California came later, and all these other states came later too. But before the Mayflower, we were here. And so, you know, it, 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 the, the misunderstanding, and this is why it's important to talk about this during Hispanic Heritage Month. What is going on is a lack of understanding of our history, of our contributions. And it's not just the average American that doesn't know this. It's the average Latino. We Latinos don't even know our own history. It's not that our kids don't have role models. They do. They just don't know them. 